The Holy Spirit is one of the most important and most misunderstood parts of your spiritual life. In this episode of Old School, we'll cut through the mystery and the weird to show you what a spirit-filled life should look like. about the Holy Spirit. Of all of the facets of your spiritual life, it's one of the most important, but it's also one of the most debated and misunderstood things in our world. What is the role of the Holy Spirit? If you go across America and you look at church backgrounds all across, most people would agree on the role of God the Father, Most of us would agree on the role of God the Son, Jesus, our Savior. But if you ask people from 10 different church backgrounds about the role of the Holy Spirit, you get probably 10 different answers. And and it's really odd to me as a Christian, because I know our group here, we've got folks from all different backgrounds and there's so much misunderstanding with that that I want to I want to look and kind of set aside whatever it is that you grew up with and and all together look and see what does the Bible say about it because we we get some really different ideas when we talk about the Holy Spirit especially when you're in a Pentecostal church and they talk about the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we, we get some weird ideas, okay? So let's, let's get our shoulders ready. How many of you guys, okay, hand raised, how many of you guys, when, when the guy on the stage at a Pentecostal church says, we're going to talk about the power of the Spirit, how many think about this? That's really cool talking to you. Yeah, that was a great conversation. No, not really. How many think about something closer to this? Let the bodies hit the flow. Let the bodies. Okay. Anybody else? (laughs) I've been in some weird services. I can't believe he's saying drowning pool in church. Okay. Uh, Sometimes we get get some just pretty extreme ideas about what it is that the Holy Spirit empowering you is all about. What I want to do today is I want to try to cut through the kooky and the goofy and the fringe and the bizarre to, to look at how did Jesus describe this? How does the Bible record this? And how can we participate in what the Holy Spirit's doing in our world? Uh, we're finishing up our series entitled Old School, and some of you guys might be thinking, Pastor Chris, this is a, this is a message about baptism of the Holy Spirit. This is a message about Pentecost. It's not about the Old Testament at all. Well, actually, it is. See, the Holy Spirit empowering people to do stuff, it's not, a, it's not a Pentecostal idea. It's not a New Testament idea. It's a whole Bible thing. Because no matter where you look, in the whole record of God interacting with humanity, and write this down in your notes, God this has always been the same. God gives the Holy Spirit to help you do stuff. To help you do stuff. And it actually has been happening for a long time. In the Old Testament, God gave the Holy Spirit to help people do stuff. You say, nah, uh yeah, huh? Let me show you. Okay. Let me show you. I'll just give you a few examples. There are plenty more, but we'd be here all day if we looked at all of them. Judges chapter 3, verses 9 and 10. When the people of Israel cried out to the Lord for help, the Lord raised up a rescuer to save them. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he became Israel's judge. He went to war against King Cushan Rishathaim of Aram, and the Lord gave Othniel, this judge, victory. So there's a crisis in the country. Uh, We've got these people who are oppressing us. They pray to God, and God takes a regular guy, and the Holy Spirit comes upon him, and he becomes this great military hero. 
Or how about this one, Judges 14. So Judges 14, verse 5, as Samson and his parents were going down to Timnah, a young lion suddenly attacked Samson near the vineyards of Timnah. At that moment, the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon him. And he ripped it. This is just cool. Anybody who's like, the Bible is boring. You have read the wrong part. I don't know what happened. Okay? The Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon Samson, and he ripped the lion's jaws apart with his bare hands. Wow, that is rated R right there. Um, let me give you one more, less violent. Uh, 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 13. So Samuel took a flask of olive oil that he had brought, and he anointed David, the shepherd boy, with the oil. And the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David from that day on. And it was not too long after that moment that David stands up to the giant Goliath and, and defeats him in this miraculous one-on-one -on -one deal. He went on to become this great military leader. He unites the tribes of Israel into this nation. And all of these guys, they share something in common. And the Bible records it specifically so that we can take these things and look at them and learn from them. Again and again and again, the Holy Spirit comes upon regular people to empower them to do something beyond what they normally had the ability to do. That's not a Pentecostal idea. That's a whole Bible idea. That's a God has always been in the business of helping people to accomplish things that he wants them to do. And he does that by the Holy Spirit coming upon someone in a moment or for a season or in David's case for a prolonged season to empower them to do stuff. And so I want to look at two different ways that the Holy Spirit empowers us to do stuff because if God's going to help me do things, then I want, I'll take, anybody else? I'll take all the help I can get. Anybody else? Okay, I want it if it's available. There are two different ways that the Holy Spirit empowers normal people to do amazing things. <clears throat> And this is the part in the talk where it would be really cool to say, all right, so the Holy Spirit empowers people like he did Samson. So, so single men, if you really want to impress the girl in the weight room who's on the other side doing cardio, just like, Holy Spirit, activate. And then you just rip the thing apart. And she's like, man, I need to get myself a man of God like that. I, that would be a really cool sermon. This is not that, Okay. If, if you get into a moment where you need to kill a lion with your bare hands and you pray, God's probably got your back. Not likely. I want to talk about more likely scenarios where the Holy Spirit can help you to be successful in your spiritual life. Okay, Two different ways. So the first one is this. Write this down in your notes. The point of the Spirit in you is to help you to grow spiritually. The Holy Spirit empowered you in two different ways, the Holy Spirit in you and the Holy Spirit on you. We're going to look at both, but let me focus first on the one that is, I think, more central for all of us to understand. The Holy Spirit in you is what helps you to grow spiritually. It makes me think of uh, one of these. How many, how many recognize this? Anybody know what this is? If you're on the podcast, I'm sorry, you guys, if you're into podcasts, we podcast every service. I'm sorry, you can't see this, okay? This is a Super Mario Brothers mushroom. This is the red one, all right? How many know, how many know, you know what this does? What happens when Mario has one of these? Yeah, he gets bigger. He gets bigger, he can bust blocks. Uh, I love Super Mario Brothers. I know that some of you guys are like, super what? Um... How many of you guys, this would just be fun, how many of you guys, your first experience with Mario was with Duck Hunt, with the free one that came with the NES? That's me, that's me, yeah, I'm dating myself a little bit. There have been a lot of other ones, but that's still a classic, okay? So think of it like this, the Holy Spirit uh, comes and lives in you whenever you say, God, save me from my sin, I want to be in your family. The Holy Spirit comes, and the purpose of the Holy Spirit in you is to help you to grow spiritually, is to help you to mature, 
is to help you to take on God's character. If you're going to be adopted into his family, he expects that little by little you start acting like a family member of God. And so he says, I have all of these things in my character. I'm going to help you to develop those. Okay? And I want everybody to understand, because again, some of you guys, if, if you grew up in a Catholic church or a Lutheran background or Presbyterian, Baptist, Methodist, Pentecostal, holiness, all of these, we all have different ideas about this. But you cannot be a Christian unless the Holy Spirit lives in you. Okay, this is foundational. Uh, Jesus said it this way. In John 3, 6, he said, Humans give life to their children, yet only God's Spirit can change you into a child of God. Right? There, there are no Christians in the world that don't have the Holy Spirit already in them. 1 John 4, 13 says, God has given us his spirit as proof that we live in him and he in us. Okay? So this part is not like, oh, I need to get the Holy Spirit living with, he is already with you. Okay? Write this down in your notes. If Jesus is your Lord, the Holy Spirit is already in you. Okay? So I want to make sure we all, we all get that. And he is already working alongside you to help you to grow. Now, you all know somebody who needs like a whole bucket full of these to grow because there, there is all kinds of knucklehead in that brain of there. And it's going to take a long time for God to work out all of the knots in their muscles so they can spiritually grow, okay? But we all need that. And, uh, and maturing spiritually is something that uh, if you grew up in church, you probably heard of this as the fruit of the Spirit. We taught a whole series on this a while back. He helps you to take on God's character. Galatians 5, verse 17 through 23 says, The Spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of what the sinful nature desires. He produces this kind of fruit in our lives. And so this is example Okay? This is the outward evidence that somebody is getting it, right? That somebody is becoming more in the image of Christ. He produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, Dallas Cowboys fandom, gentleness, and self-control. Okay, some of you guys are like, I didn't know that was in there. Just rare translations of, <laughs> just kidding. He helps you to grow, okay? You need this, all right? If you're here and you say, Pastor Chris, I'm a Christian, this part is already here. However, there's a difference between the Holy Spirit in you to help you to grow and the Holy Spirit on you to empower you to do some specific things as part of your Christian life. And that's the part that I think there's more disagreement on what the Holy Spirit on you does. Because when you, when you look at all of those passages in the Old Testament, it said the Holy Spirit came upon Othniel to do something very specific. The Holy Spirit came upon Samson to do something specific. The Holy Spirit came upon David to accomplish some specific things. And write this down in your notes. The point of the Spirit on you is to help you to share your faith. It is to help you to tell people about Jesus, to show them what a Christ-like life looks like, to, to take what you have, this hope that you have, and to share that with someone else. It's an empowerment beyond growing spiritually, because really it's not about you growing spiritually, it's about you doing something beyond your ability to do it, and that really is, is kind of more like this guy. Now, how many... How many out here, how many know what happens when Mario touches this guy? You know what this is? I'm going to rack up the points. I'm going to run through like 50 turtles uh, in, the, in the 10 seconds that I'm rainbow Mario, right? This is for podcast folks. Again, sorry. Uh, this is the Super Mario Brothers uh, power star. Natasha uh, helped us to create this because Amazon couldn't get the officially licensed one in time. It's very cute. Um, but the idea of this is, all right, if you've ever played Mario, you know what this is, but let me describe it to you. Okay, if you haven't, cool game. Um, 
you get this, and for a limited time, Mario is not only like big and strong, but he's like invincible. You can run through whatever. It's, it's a very specific thing to help you get a, a very specific task done. It's, it's empowerment beyond just this regular indwelling of the Holy Spirit. There's something different when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And, and it's something that's important enough I want you to listen to how Jesus talked about the Holy Spirit coming upon New Testament people. Okay, so Jesus uh, hangs on the cross for our sins. He, he dies. He's, he's defeating death. He comes back to life, and he's talking to his disciples, and he looks at them, not just the 11 core guys, but uh, other men and women who follow Jesus. And, and so he's appearing to these people and he says, look, it's up to you to tell the world that I am the Savior. Angels are not going to come and show up in everybody's bedroom and tell them Jesus is the way to be saved. He said, it's up to you. The most important task ever given to humanity, the most important message to ever share with your friends, and it's up to you to tell everybody. So he gives them this huge deal. Go into all the world and, ma and baptize them in, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Make disciples. He gives them this whole thing. And then he says this in Luke 24, 49. He says, stay here in the city until the Holy Spirit comes and fills you with power from heaven. And then in Acts 1, 8, he says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You notice the verbiage there. And you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere. Now, it's important to understand, when Jesus says this, he says, don't do anything, don't even start, don't try to tell people about me as a Savior until the Holy Spirit comes upon you in power, and he will give you power to be my witnesses. When Jesus says this to these guys, they are already Christians. Okay? They already believe that Jesus is the Savior. They have seen the resurrected Savior. They've put their faith in Jesus. Uh, um, Jesus has already, he, he has this moment where he breathes on them and he says, receive the Holy Spirit, right? The Holy Spirit is already in them when Jesus says, don't even try to do this until the Holy Spirit comes upon you. It's something different, but it's something important. It's so important, he said, don't even try to do it without this. And, and I want you to think, all right, we went back to the, in the intro, and I said, when, when I say Holy Spirit empowerment, what comes to your mind? And, uh, and some of you guys said, okay, yeah, the, the sort of weird stuff where like people are whipping other people with suit jackets, and they're, ah, okay, uh, that's what comes to my mind. Okay. Here's what came to the people's minds when Jesus said, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and you will be empowered to be my witness. Okay. Here's what came to their mind. Oh, you mean like when the Holy Spirit came upon Othniel to save the... Yes. Oh, when, when the Holy Spirit came upon Samson to... Yes. When the Holy Spirit came upon David to fight Goliath? Yes. Okay. Because they were already... It wasn't a new idea. The Holy Spirit coming upon someone in power, that's not new. That's always been the case, and it is still the case today. Now, let me show you a piece of that in action. A little less exciting than ripping a lion apart with your bare hands, but still pretty cool. So not long after that, Peter and uh, John, uh, were they were walking in town. They see a guy who needs to be healed. They say, he, he's asking for money, and they say, look, man, I'm broke, but I will pray for you, and I believe that Jesus has empowered us. You can be healed, and God will heal you. And God does a miracle in this guy's life. People get upset, and these two believers get called in for questioning in front of the religious leaders in town. And, and Luke, the, the writer of Acts, records what Peter says. He's probably in the crowd there. And I want you to notice how specific he is when he writes this down so that thousands of years later we can read it. Acts 4, verse 8, Luke says, Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them. Now, 
economy of words. Scrolls were expensive. This, this is going to be copied by hand for thousands of years before the printing press. Okay? It's very specific that he says this. Why does he say that extra line? He could have said, then Peter stood up and told the guys what's up. But he wanted us to know this is an example. Okay? This is the same guy who's writing this. Jesus said, you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And then he says, here, let me show you an example. Peter, in this moment, is filled with the Holy Spirit, and he says to the guys who are questioning him, let me clearly state to all of you and to all the people of Israel that he, this man, was healed by the powerful name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, the man you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead. There is salvation in no one else. Now, on a, on a weirdness scale of 1 to 10, where 1 is totally normal and 10 is that, that goofy second cousin who always gets invited to Thanksgiving somehow and no one knows who invited him. And, you know, he's, he brings his, like, 1970s Star Wars figures that are having the paint rubbed off on him and he's playing pew, 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 and he smells kind of like somewhere between menthol and, like, breath mints and dog food, like that, okay? Is it zero to 10? How weird, that thing that Peter said, how weird is that? Where is that on the weird scale? That's like a one, right? That's not weird. There, nothing is, there's no earthquake. No one is doing somersaults and carrying a velvet banner and go, wah, right? That's, he's just telling people, Jesus is the way to be saved. You blew it, but there's still time for you. Okay? On a 1 to 10, that's a 1 on the weird scale, but that's a 10 on the boldness scale. Like That dude just told these people what they could take him off and nail him to a cross just like they did Jesus. That's pretty bold. And Jesus said, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will have boldness to witness. And you need this. You need it. And I know for some of you, from your church background, from your church tradition, because let's be honest, okay, in our 100-year history, there have probably been some moments that got a little weird. Because when people get excited about God and when human nature interacts with spiritual forces, sometimes it takes some really interesting sounds and sights and shapes, okay? Doesn't mean it's not legitimate. But I don't want us to miss the point. The point is power to be a witness, and I want, okay, put this on the screen, I want you to write this down, but I really want you to think about this. If you want the people you love to know God, you need to be filled with the Spirit. You need to be Spirit-filled. If you want your son and daughter who you raised in church, but they're off doing their own thing, and they know better, and you've tried to tell them, and you're like, Chris, they just don't want to talk about God anymore. They don't want to listen to me. You need the Holy Spirit. If you hear this and you're like, man, I know some of my coworkers really need God, but my boss is very strict about talking about religion in the office. I don't know how to share my faith if I can't say it that way. You need the Holy Spirit. If you're like, I, I know my classmates are, are depressed I know that, that they have this lack of hope in their lives. I know that I have the answer. I know God can help them, but they believe that science disproves God, and they think that I'm full of fairy tales. They don't want to hear it. You need the Holy Spirit. If you want to be effective, you need that. You need to be Spirit-filled. And I know so many times it's come with all of this weird baggage we think of in our minds. There's nothing at all weird about saying, God, give me boldness to tell people that you are the way to, to be saved. And that's something we need. I need. That needs to be woven into the fabric of our church culture, of American church culture. We all, Baptists, Pentecostals, Catholics, Methodists, everybody needs empowerment from the Holy Spirit to be an effective witness. It's not exclusive to Assemblies of God. Let me say this too. If, if you're here and you grew up in a Pentecostal church, or you've been part of the Assemblies of God for a long time, let me, let me challenge you, okay? Uh, and, and I'm sorry for stepping on your toes, but I'm not sorry. I need to step on my own sometimes. Okay, write this down. If you speak in tongues, but you don't share your faith, you need to recalibrate. 
you have lost the point. Now, I support praying in the Spirit, okay? If you're not from a Pentecostal background, we say it in a lot of different ways. The Bible records a lot of times in the New Testament where people would pray and they would say things and they don't even understand the language they're speaking. Their mouth is moving, words are coming out, they don't even know what it is that they're saying, but the Holy Spirit is adding meaning to the verbs and, and, and the, the sounds, and the Holy Spirit is praying through them even when they don't know what they're saying. And that seems kind of weird if you've never experienced that. I get it. That seems a little odd. Sometimes they, people call it speaking in tongues. They call it praying in the Spirit. There's nothing at all wrong with that, and I support that 100%. So I don't want anyone to misunderstand. But that is not the point of being baptized in the Holy Spirit. Jesus, okay? Jesus did not, I'm going to be careful, but I just asked Pentecostals, give me grace for a minute, because I'm, I'm more interested in how Christ described it than how our church tradition describes it. Okay? Jesus said, when you receive the Holy Spirit, you will receive power to be witnesses. Okay? Check this out. He didn't even tell the guys the praying in tongues thing was going to happen. It was a surprise. Okay? It's cool. I do it. I pray in the Spirit all the time. So should you. But that is not the point. The point of needing this empowerment is so that I can tell people who are on the pathway to being locked out of heaven forever, there is a Savior who can change your life. And the Holy Spirit empowering me is what gives weight to my words. So it's not just some guy trying to convince you of something, but it's God speaking through me. So whether God is speaking through me in a language I understand or not, I need the empowerment of the Spirit. And here's what's cool. As Natasha comes back up, last thing to write down is this, okay? If you ask God for the Holy Spirit, the answer will be yes, if you ask God for the Holy Spirit, the answer will be yes. And I know that for some of you, depending on your church background, you hear that and you immediately shot block that because you're like, that wasn't my experience. I want you to listen to, listen to what Jesus said about it and just for a moment, just, just suspend the shot block for a minute until you hear what Jesus said in Luke chapter 11. So Luke is talking, Luke is recording Jesus' words, and Jesus says this. He says, keep on asking, and you will receive what you ask for. He doesn't say, keep on asking, and you might. He says, you will. Now, keep on asking means it may not be instant, but if you continue to ask, the answer will be Yes, the answer will be yes. And then he says this, if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? And I used to debate this in my mind, and I've talked with other pastors about this idea. I said, okay, well, we need to, we need to think tank this and figure out. Now, it's, you know, is Jesus talking about the Holy Spirit in you? Is this really just a passage saying, if you really want to be saved, you can be saved? Or is Jesus talking about, if you want to be filled with the Spirit to be a witness, then you can be filled? And then as I'm preparing this talk, God helps me to understand it's both because it's the same Holy Spirit. The same Holy Spirit that is in you to help you to grow spiritually is the same Holy Spirit that comes upon you to give you power and boldness to share your faith effectively. And Jesus said, if you are bad at giving gifts to your kids, how much more is the Holy Spirit going to be given to those who ask? God wants you to have the help to grow spiritually, and he wants you to have the empowerment to share your faith. Now, there are a lot of things, there are a lot of ways the Holy Spirit interacts with people, right? You see a lot of examples in the, Old, in the New Testament of people doing things that we would say that is supernatural. People knowing things about somebody they couldn't possibly know so that they can challenge them, want to pray with someone. 
people having uh, the ability to hear what someone is speaking in an unknown language in the spirit and interpret that into a language so everyone can understand. And I support all of that. I want all of that. I am all for that. But that is not the point. And I want to just center us around the main idea. The big idea is you need God's help to be an effective witness. And if you ask, the answer will be yes. And so in a minute, and guys, if we can get the keyboard unmuted, it seems to be muted. We can work on that. It's not working. Okay. We'll just, we'll go without it. That's okay. If you can figure it out, that's great. Um, we don't have to have that today. But here's, here's the cool thing. In a minute, I'm going to invite you to together ask for God to fill you with the Holy Spirit and come upon you to help you to be a better witness. And I understand if you didn't grow up in a Pentecostal church, that might seem like a weird idea. My hope is that in us talking about it, you understand there's nothing abnormal about that. In fact, that's what Jesus expected when he said, go into all the world and tell them. And so when we finish today, we're going to finish a little differently today. When we finish today, I'm going, to, I'm going to invite you to say, if that is you and you're like, man, I need God to help me to be a better witness to my friends, to my family, to my coworkers, to my classmates. I'm going to ask you to step out of your seats. And we're going to come together and we're just going to gather folks with you and pray alongside you and ask, God, you said if we needed the Holy Spirit to ask, we are asking. We want that. And there's nothing bizarre about that. And, and I know, and I've talked to, I've talked to several people, and, uh, and I want to I walk carefully here for those of you guys who come from an Assemblies of God background. I support that 100%. The Assemblies of God says this. We, we would say, when the Holy Spirit comes upon somebody to empower them, that is a spirit-level thing. I can't see that. There's not like a mark that appears on your forehead that uh, is like glowing a little bit whenever the Holy Spirit is in your life. That'd be really weird. And, you know, people get like weird hats. I don't want people to know. Okay. There's, there's no outside sign. And, and so folks in the fellowship said, okay, how do we know then if we say God empowers by the Holy Spirit to accomplish your will? How do we know? And what we see in the Bible is most of the time when someone starts praying in the Spirit, when they start speaking in a language they don't know, then people said, oh, well, I can see that. Okay, if they're doing that, if the Holy Spirit's empowering them to do that, then clearly the Holy Spirit is empowering them to share their faith. It's the it's what we would call the initial physical evidence because that's the thing that I can see that I can say, okay, well, I wasn't sure if Tom was filled with the Spirit or not, but I heard Tom praying in the Spirit. So clearly the Holy Spirit is empowering him to do that. He's also empowering him to be a witness. Okay? We call that initial physical evidence. Okay? I support that. However, this might have been your experience. I've talked to so many people who really deeply desire the Holy Spirit empowering them. And they, they come up in a service like this or at a youth camp or, or at a retreat or something. And they pray for an hour and they're like, I haven't prayed in the Spirit. I haven't spoken in tongues. I guess God doesn't want me to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And maybe that's been you. And I want to, I just, okay, I want to challenge you. Really? Does that sound like how Jesus described? If he said, don't even try to share your faith without the Holy Spirit empowering you. If he said, how much more will the Holy Spirit be given to those who ask? You're like, I guess he doesn't want it for me. I guess he doesn't want it. I, I think he does want it for you. Let me, let me ask an intellectual question. I know we're, we're about to wrap this up. We're going to take some time to pray. Okay? But intellectually, let me ask you this. Is it possible? Is it possible that the hang-up sometimes 
in our circles as assemblies of God, is it possible that the hang-up... Right back. <laughs> Give it a minute. Let's make sure that's back on. We're back, and we have keys. Hey, all right. Thank you, guys. Is it possible that the hang-up is on our side because the mechanics of praying something I don't understand, that's kind of hard to describe. It's, it's, it's a little, okay, how many have ever, anybody else, how many have ever know, known I really need to get sleep tonight? And so you're like, man, I'm trying so hard to fall asleep. Anybody else experience that? What happens the harder you try to fall asleep? You can't do it. I'm trying so hard to fall asleep that the trying itself is what's preventing me from falling asleep. I, I've been around this. I grew up in this. Again, I pray in the Spirit. I've seen people pray in the Spirit. I've seen people filled with the Spirit. I support all of it. I support it. But I can tell you right now that I have seen people where the, well, I just don't know. Do I, do I just say stuff? Is it gonna, what's it going to feel like on my tongue? What's it going to be like? Am I going to think it? Or the, and, they, and it's just, they're, just, they're trying so hard. They're thinking so hard that that one piece is like, why? Well, I, I guess God doesn't want me to have power to witness to my friends. I guess God doesn't want me to share the gospel with my family. It must up be up to someone else because I tried and he didn't give me the Holy Spirit. I just want to challenge you. Okay, think about this. How many, last thing, I promise, and then we'll close. How many, how many of you guys have ever owned a smartphone or another device for a period of time and then you read an article or your granddaughter borrows your phone or your son sends you a message and you realize the phone can do something you never knew it could do that. Anybody else? I never I never knew that my phone could all right? Did did you know that you can set up your phone to take a picture of you by saying cheese? You probably didn't know that. There's a tutorial and honestly for iPhone probably for Android. There's a tutorial if you follow this whole deal, it's like you got to kind of backdoor into this system, and then you put the camera on the tripod, and you say, cheese, and when the phone hears cheese, it takes a picture. Cool. Here's what's cool. Some of you guys have had an iPhone, and you, don't miss this, some of you have had an iPhone in your pocket for years, and the capability to do that has been available to you for years. It's not that the phone didn't give you the power to do it, it's that you weren't sure how to do your side of it. And I, okay, we're going to pray. And we're going to ask God to fill you with the Holy Spirit, to empower you, to come upon you. And, and I encourage you to open yourself to the Holy Spirit praying through you in languages you don't understand. I support it. I applaud it. I am with you. That is something that is for today. But if that, if you stand here and you say, God, fill me with your spirit, and you don't speak in another language, do not walk out of this room and say, well, I guess he doesn't want me to share my faith. Yes, he does. You need it. And I believe if you ask for the tools to do what God asks you to do, he will give you the tools, and that will come in time. I just believe that that will come in time because I think that's for everybody. But don't get hung up on that part. You need the Holy Spirit in you to help you to grow, and you need the Holy Spirit upon you to help you to share your faith. And so before we leave this room, before you turn off this video, I want to give you an opportunity to pray and say, God, I want that. Because for some of you, this may be the first time you've ever even heard this idea. And for some of you, you've been, I don't know about this. It seems a little weird. And some you said, no, Chris, you don't understand. I tried 50 times. God doesn't want me to have it. And for all of you, I believe today is the day when you say, God, help me, that he says, yes, I just believe that. 
because God wants you to be successful in this life. He wants you to share your faith. He wants your son and your daughter and your neighbors to know him. He wants you to do that. And we need the Holy Spirit to do it right. Hey there, just wanted to take a minute to say thanks for watching. If a friend sent you this link, it's because they believe what we talked about today is gonna make a positive impact in your life. And if it did, there's probably somebody that you care about who could benefit from it. So take a minute to share this video with somebody, post it to your timeline or send them a direct link. And if you're able, take a minute to give using the link at the bottom of the description on this video. One last thing, maybe you feel a tug at your soul and you're ready to take the next step in your spiritual life and form a relationship with God. We've got folks here who would love to talk with you about it. So just text prayer to the number on your screen and we'll follow up with you. It's also in the description on this video in case that helps. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.